James's question is, can we generate a signal you know, when price crosses a moving average? So an EMA, for example. Yeah. So Bloodhound can, yeah, basically you're just looking for a crossover signal. It's all it is, James, right? Uh, but instead of two moving averages, it's just price crossing a moving average to generate a signal. Yeah. Now keep in mind, Bloodhound doesn't place orders. Bloodhound's an indicator, right? So indicators don't place orders. So if you wanted to submit stop entry orders, then that would require Blackbird. Yeah. So instead of the EMA, how about let's just use the BWAP since we already have the BWAP indicator on here, right? So we'll just use the BWAP line here um, as, as the moving average. Uh, let's see here. Uh, call it the BWAP crossover signal. So let's go to our solvers list. And I know I'm always using the right click because it's just so much faster. But, you know, if you like, you can always go up to the solvers button at the top here and find your solver there. So we want a crossover. There we go. There's our crossover. There's there's a name, price crossover, the BWAP. So um, input A, uh, that's going to be priced, that input. And of course, you know, we'll just use the close of the bar. And then input B, that will just, you know, again, right, it's the SMA. So obviously you could put the EMA in here if you wanted to. Uh, but since we already have the v VWAP on the chart, let's just go with that uh, VWAP. And I'm just going to use the VWAP line. So that's already selected for us. Now, the problem that you're probably going to have here is if we zoom in here, so this is kind of the other question I was going to get to, which is, right, when you get your pullback to pick up the entry order, most of the time, right, you're going to get a crossover. So you're going to get a reversal signal. So you're you know, either you're going to have to come up with some other, um, you know, criteria, you know, to explain, you know, why this long entry, you know, should be acknowledged and used as an entry signal. And then, you know, so we place a, a buy limit order more importantly, you would have to explain why do we ignore this crossover signal where we you know which is where when price will fill your entry order, right? As opposed to re canceling that buy entry and replacing it with a sell limit, right? So you have to figure out, you know, which of these signals to acknowledge and which ones to ignore, you know, come up with some kind of logic to figure that out. Um, because so far, everything here is just going to reverse your position. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, not even that bar has a long enough wick to actually fill, you know, to actually fill here. So one simple solution to that you know, that I've been asked in the past is, you know, how do I identify when the entire bar crosses, um, crosses the EMA, right? Not just the close, but the entire bar, you know, crosses over. So we could switch this over to, instead of it just being the closing price, right? We could say, all right, when the bar crosses the BWAP. So, Zooming in here, Actually, let's, let's turn off the auto scale. There we go. Okay, now we're zoomed in a bit more, right? So instead, you know, you could wait for that bar um, to generate the signal. And so in which case, oh, look at that. Actually, you know, we did get a pickup right there. So we could, you know, shift all these entry signals forward one bar to the next bar, you know, where the entire bar crossed over. 
And so to do that, to do that, it's just a matter of adjusting the prices, right? So for when the entire bar crosses, well, the low of the bar crossed for a long and the high of the bar crosses for a short, right? So you're just gonna analyze the individual bar prices and figure out exactly which price, you know, is more effective. So if we do that, there we go, right? There we go, yeah. So this cross down is now on the bar where the low or the entire bar crossed below and the, or the entire bar, the, I'm sorry, the high crossed down. And so for an up uh, long signal, right, the low prices cross up. And that means the entire bar is on the other side. So, yeah, so there's that way as well. Yeah, obviously when you look at this, you're just getting a lot of flip-flopping, you know, reversing directions there. Um, if you come up with some other kind of filtering, you know, so let's say you wanted to keep this by, you know, but you wanted to get rid of this cell, you know, so that way you don't get reversed. Yeah, you don't have to figure out, you know, what, what those mechanisms are there. So, yeah. So, you know, so basically that, you know, there's your entry. And then tomorrow in the Blackbird workshop, um, I can show you how to set Blackbird up tomorrow, you know, to place that limit entry order, right? So, yeah, if you wanted to use Raven, you know, Raven would place an order. Yeah, I'll just use a square, right? So for this buy, you know, Raven would place an entry order, you know, wherever the moving average line is at that point, you know, at that moment in time, you know, but if you want your entry, if you want your limit entry order, you know, to follow, you know, say like when this VWAP's moving down, if you want that limit entry to follow the indicator, then you would have to use Blackbird to do that. But Raven could at least place your entry over there and it'll just rest there at that at that price point um, and not follow uh, the the indicator all right so there we go i think that's as far as we can go with james's questions so far uh, until tomorrow